Hi, this is Scott Sischer, Associate Editor of Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, and I'm joined here today with Dr. Oscar Palomares, who is the Ramon E. Cajal Research Associate in the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology School of Chemistry in Complutense University of Madrid. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we're here today to discuss your paper, uh, your co-author on ACT D12 and ACT D13, two novel masked relevant allergens in kiwifruit seeds. So thanks for joining us to talk about this interesting article. So, you know, we've uh, seen articles about people having odd allergic reactions to the pits in an orange or the seeds uh, in an apple, but with kiwi kiwifruit, uh, what made you even think to look into the seeds in a kiwifruit as an allergen? Okay. One of the main limitations of uh, kiwifruit allergy diagnosis is the low sensitivity especially when doing in vivo skin prick tests and also with a specific IgE determinations using commercially available kiwifruit extracts. It's true that the component resource diagnosis approaches of kiwifruit allergy has significantly improved the sensitivity, but still there are around 35% of the patients that did not react to any of the components inclu including these approaches. Wow, so, so you, you, already, you identified you missed a third who you would have expected a positive test, but it was negative. Exactly. Then, uh, why, why to look into the seeds? Okay, the kiwi seeds are not frequently removed and they are also ingested. Right. There are also, as you mentioned, uh, very potent seeds that have been previously described as food allergenic sources, such as peanut or even mustard seeds. And these seeds contain very high amounts of very stable seed-specific proteins that have been also described as relevant allergens. So that's why we were thinking that maybe in the tiny seeds of the kiwi fruit there might be some masked allergens that might have been overlooked just because they are contained in these specific little seeds. All right. So they're not usually included. So what did you find? So. First, we divided the kiwi fruit allergic patients into two groups, those showing positive skin prick tests against uh, kiwi fruit extract and the other group with negative skin prick tests. And we tested both groups of patients against uh, total kiwi fruit, pulp kiwi fruit extracts, and with seeds kiwi extracts. And what we found is that uh, there were two specific IgE reactive proteins of around 51 and 12 kilodalton that were exclusively contained in the kiwi seeds extract. So the group two, which was the group that showed negative skin prick test, exclusively reacted against these proteins that are exclusively contained in the kiwi seeds, but not in the other extracts. So we tried to identify which type of proteins were that, and what we found is the 51 kilodalton allergen to be an 11S globulin, and then we call uh, ACT12, and then we found that the 12 kilodalton protein was a 2S albumin, and we call it uh, ACT13. And we used classical proteomic tools and Edman sequencing methods to identify that. So then we purified both allergens from the kiwi seed using conventional chromatographic steps. And this was designed based on the biochemical specific feature of these two allergens. And what we found is that around 70% of the kiwi fruit allergic patients, the 55 allergic kiwi fruit allergic patients we included in the study, were reacting against the 11S globulin ACT12 and around 20% of the patients were reacting against the ACT13, the 2S albumin. And very interestingly, both purified proteins retaining allergenic activity as they were able to induce IG cross-linking in uh, skin mat cells when we tested them by a skin prick test. So where, where is the specialty in terms of diagnosis? Because uh, right now, um, there's, I guess there isn't a, a component test for this, is there? No, well, they are just trying to, to, to implement this uh, with uh, the, the allergens from the fruit mainly. But, but we believe it's that the potential inclusion of this uh, novel to mask it, previously masked allergens might significantly increase the, the, the sensitivity of the test. If, if you have someone doing a prick-prick test, so they take the, you know, like the pulp from the kiwi fruit and they just do a prick-prick test, they would miss these patients, presumably. Yeah, presumably. Yes. So, what would you? What do you? What would you? I mean, this is sort of not FDA approved, so yeah. to speak. But you know, would you have them? Would you suggest that the clinician needs to really crush up the seed part as well to do a more accurate prick prick test? Yeah, but we have to keep in mind also that one of the main problems associated to prick to prick tests is that it's very uh, high sensitivity, but a bit low specificity. So, in any case, I. Would suggest, just as you mentioned, to maybe mess everything, but 
you have to strongly mash everything break because, a little seed. exactly because the, the little seed is really strong and then uh, it's not easy that the proteins contained in these little seeds are extracted but not due to the solvent employed but right. also to the really strong uh, nature of the tissue. Well, this was a very uh, important uh, observation. It has clinical ramifications and, you know, opens up other issues about cross-reactivity and things like that. So I thank you very much for uh, submitting this uh, interesting work to the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, and it's great hearing about it, and I certainly think uh, our readers should take a look at this article. Okay, thank you very much for inviting me. It was really a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.